Uh, this this will be fun. We're gonna go over a quick zine that I bought recently called Closet of the Eye Wizard. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. Today, we're gonna talk about Closet of the Eye Wizard. This is a DCC compatible zine full of magical hats that you can incorporate into your game. Some of them slightly cursed, some of them uh, overpowered, but this is the way of Dungeon Crawl Classics. This is the way. So let's take a look at this ridiculous zine. Um, you can find this, I got this on um, Exalted Funeral, which has loads of OSR stuff on there and you can find some really interesting things. And I recently bought a bunch of stuff and it all showed up so I wanted to make some videos on it. And this is one of them. So this is a collection of hats that are uh, both have a story here and then come with really fun art as well as um, certain stats in here of how the hat works. So I wanted to talk about some of my favorites, but because this is the closet of the eye wizard, every piece of art here is um, a giant eyeball wearing a hat. So I'll kind of flip through some of these. <laughs> so here we have an eyeball wearing a hat. Um, this, is a, uh, this is a fun one. This eyeball is wearing this hat. Um, and they all have weird little bits about them. So. Uh, this is the Hennis of the Spineless Saint by Lazy Lich. So these hats each come with a uh, kind of a history about them, which can be really fun. And then they come with some kind of funny power. So uh, looking at some of these, this power is um, any wielder who is without wealth will gain 15 HP of healing points per day, which can be transferred to anyone who is no more than 120 feet away. Because if you read the story here, um, this hat was magical but didn't do anything because all these rich people stole it and swandled it. And it wasn't until um, a penniless person put it on his head that the magic was revealed. But if you are without wealth, you gain 15 hit points of healing per day, which can be transferred to anyone who is more than 120 feet away from you. The healing fails if the target is closer than this, the HP can be distributed any way the wearer likes. And I just love uh, the art really showcases how bizarre some of these hats are and how fun it can be to hand out to your players. Uh, so this particular hat is the Modius of Pyretic Puciance. Uh, hushed tales shared between wizards speak of the Modius of Pyretic Puciance, and the crown is highly coveted by those who are aware of its rumored existence. Um, it was crafted from a rhombic sulfur inset with several crystals of silver cyamide, seized from the severed head of a long forgo forgotten Aquilonian witch king. The ancient crown seethes with barely contained phlogistic power. The air around the Modius crackles with energy, as does the mind of the wearer. When exposed to external wizardry, the materials of the crown react explosively. The crown ignites with cerulean flames blazing brightly and shedding blinding illuminations to a 50-foot radius. The more powerful the incoming spell, the brighter the illumination. Onlookers must make a successful fortitude save ver uh, versus DC 10 plus the spell level or be blinded for 1d7 hours. My eyes, the goggles do nothing. Now concealed beneath the blinding flash is a secondary defensive power. Uh, jets of mystic flame erupt from the inset crystal, tracing their way to the spell's source and inflicting 2d14 damage. A successful DC 12 reflex so saving throw for half damage. Lastly, wizards attempting a spell duel with the wear of the Modius of Pyretic Puciance suffer a minus 1d penalty on all spell checks. As a result, any spell duel re result of phlogiston disturbance instead grants the wearer an additional plus 10 to their next spell check. So very overpowered, but very, very fun. We have the Leghorn of Cornucopic Decay. I love the art here, it's so fun. Malhur's Mycelial Cap. This one I really, really enjoy. So the 
uh, headwear is crafted from enchanted mycelium by cultists of the shrewman deity Malhor. It is a musty, earthy scent, and numerous mushrooms grow from it. The cap must be warm for 24 hours before the wearer can access any of its powers, as its fungal tendrils need time to penetrate the wearer's brain and connect it to Malhor's cosmic mycelial network. The cap becomes physically attached to the wearer after that time and will not fall off. Removing it forcibly without a remove curse spell requires a DC 20 strength check and causes 2d30 damage to the wearer. Once the wearer's psyche is connected to the mycelial network, Malhur's cap provides the following abilities. Fungal awareness. The wearer is automatically and constantly aware of locations and types of any living fungi within one mile. The wearer can also communicate telepathically with any fungi, fungi within 100 feet. You get fungi, or fungal magic. The cap grants its wearer's ability to cast several spells. Regardless of the wearer's normal spellcasting ability, these spells are always cast using a d20 with a plus 6 spell check, um, further modified by the caster's stamina bonus. The caster can spend luck or spell burn as normal. If a spell check indicates that the spell is lost for the day, the entire ability and all spells provided by it are lost. So you can summon Shrewman, Choking Cloud, invoke Patron as a first level spell. The patron in question is the Shrewman god Malhor. This is the headdress of the all seeing eye. This is the cap and bells. Uh, this is a really fun one. Flex Manning's demonic spiked helmet of gratuitous bloodshed and ultra violence. Fashioned out of a murder blitz helmet once worn by the greatest player to ever grace the killing fields, Flex Manning. The helm holds maniacal killing power. After every championship, Flex would... After every championship, Flex would drink the collective blood of the losing team directly out of the helmet in an orgy of blood, crazed ritualistic sadistic glee, all while under the influence of the demon lord Abraxas. The souls slaughtered on the field in the demon lord's name were secretly collected for the master's use in a distant galaxy, uh, in distant galaxy holy wars. While the victim's spirit departed the eviscerated corpses to pilot infernal death machines on distant Xeno worlds, a little piece stayed in the helm. These countless souls imbued the helm with the carnal lust for soul-taking and bestial bloodlust. During the last slaughter bowl, Flex was decapitated at the 50-yard blood puddle During the last slaughter bowl, Flex was decapitated at the 50-yard blood puddle, completing the ritual and sending his soul to Abraxas. Now, when worn, blood must be spilled. Every hour that it goes by, if there is no gore fed to the helm, it takes it out of the user, dealing 1d6 points of damage. Every attack made by the user gains an additional 1d6 damage, and if the target dies, their soul goes to Abraxas. If the helmet is taken off, the user's head comes with it. Uh, Jelwood's Cap of the Guillotine is really fun, where it can uh, roll around and be, be a, a pseudo-guillotine to try and cut off your head. Hat of the Seventh Pinnacle. I love this hat. This hat gives you some uh, skeletal hands that seem to hover around you, and one holds a potion and one holds a magical staff that you can use for some spells. Uh, the Zix is really fun. This isn't so much as a hat as a creature that looks like a hat and stays on your head, convincing you that it's very, very powerful and a really great magical hat to have when really you just have a parasite on your brain. Um, and the Doombeard's cap, which uh, looks like a hat. Fun tongue in cheek. Uh, if you are following me on the Jocular Junction, you might have seen that I posted the back of this, which has um, kind of a a funny magic item mail order. Uh, it's a it's an old school like mail order thing, but for uh, magic items. Um, and this was a lot of fun. So I highly recommend this. Um, if you're into Digital Classics and you have kind of a wizard centric party, this could be a lot of fun to add to your game. Um, Closet of the Eye Wizard. I'll put links down below. As always, I have a Patreon if you want to help out and support the channel and myself. 
um, which will allow me to have the time to review more things like this. I also have uh, the memberships turned on for this, so you can become a YouTube member, and that also supports me. Um, regardless, I hope you subscribe and try to catch me on Saturday mornings where I kind of discuss the tabletop role-playing news of the week, and we have a good time. We hang out. We, we talk about news. It's really good. We talk about games that I play. Subscribe for more as I'm going to be reviewing some more of these, and I will see you guys all in the next video.